Jesus was a rock star. But we are starting a new series. What would Jesus undo? Now, Jesus came and he did a lot of stuff. And there has been a, a, a lot of talk about WWJD, which is what would Jesus do, all right? And this is a bracelet. You maybe don't see him quite as often now these days. But it's actually taken. It all started with a guy named Charles Sheldon. And he wrote a book way back in the late 1800s. And it was all about, I want to do this, and, and what would Jesus do? A question that, by the way, I was asking when I got my bad haircut, okay? I, I wanted to be snarky, and then I thought, yeah, but then she might find out I'm a pastor, and then that's bad. Uh, that's why I, I always tip well, because what if they saw me on Facebook, and then they'll hate all Christians because of me? But we, well, what, what would Jesus do? Because God, Jesus has done a lot for me. Imagine, imagine for me a little bit, because you are in a place in your life where God, and if you're here today and you love Jesus, God came in your life and he forgave you of your sins. He completely washed. Not only did he forgive your sins, but before he found you, your life didn't mean a whole lot. And now you get to live a full life. You get to experience him, love him, know him. You today, you living in 2018, get to experience God's word like no Christian that has ever lived on the planet. Not only do I have, a bi have multiple Bibles in my pocket, but in my pocket I got commentaries, I got study Bibles, I can touch a button and get the Bible read to me in the car. No Christian ever in the history of mankind has had as instant access to the absolute intimate words of God. You are, you are more blessed in, than any Christian that has ever lived. Now, you also have access to talking to God anytime you want. If you were born before Jesus came and, and died for our sins and rose from the dead, if you wanted to talk to God and you wanted to get forgiven, you'd have to go get a sheep, you'd have to bring it to a priest, and then you wouldn't even be the one that would even get to talk to God. That priest would take that lamb from you, would do a sacrifice on your behalf. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, I, I wish I could preach this right now, but one of the cool things that happened when Jesus said, it is finished, Bible says that the, the curtain was torn in the temple from the top to the bottom between the holy place. I, I want to preach it, but I'm not going to. What it means is now anybody can talk directly to God. Absolutely awesome. God also gave you a spiritual purpose that you hold in your hands the keys to life for the people you love, for the people you care about. You have a spiritual purpose you never had before. And the reason is because the Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, now it lives in you. You are the most learned. You are the most powerful Christians ever to exist on planet Earth. And for most of us, we spent all week and hardly thought anything about God. We, you have such an opportunity and so often, life happens, and, and, and our lives just get too crowded. We're, it's, it's not evil. It's not, but, but we have got this incredible God that loves us so much. We got this incredible word that we have such access to. We can pray directly to God. All of that. And for some of us, we went through this whole week and, and barely paid any attention to him. So the question we have is, what would Jesus, what would Jesus undo? Okay, so this month we're going to be looking at a few different things. We're going to say Jesus would undo hollow worship. That's when you come in and you sing songs and it never goes anywhere near your heart. Uh, it's been said, I don't know who said it, I've heard it attributed to lots of people, but Christians don't tell lies, they sing lies, okay? Uh, so we're going to look at hollow worship. If Jesus could come and if he could undo one thing, he would undo hypocrisy. Jesus, hypocrisy really irritated him. If Jesus came and he could undo something, I think he would, do, he would undo spiritual pride. Today, we're going to talk about something that is probably, I think we're more vulnerable to this than anything else. I think this is the biggest attack that the enemy has. And that is, uh, if Jesus could come, he would undo indifference. He would undo indifference. And... <laughs> and I appreciate your brother. We do have kids church. I, have to, I feel like I got to talk over him the whole time. <laughs> and so give him a couple more minutes and then it'd be awesome if, if we, uh, otherwise I, I get very hyper sounding then, but I love you so much. Thank you for being here. And he can, he can hang out, but it's, uh, it's just, 
if I feel like I'm shouty, it's because I'm, I'm trying to talk over them. And so there was a church in the Bible that knew all about indifference, okay? And that was one of the churches, one of the seven churches uh, they talked about in the book of Revelation, the church of Laodicea, the church of Laodicea. And this church was a very, very wealthy church. The city was a very, very wealthy city. And before this, the letter uh, Revelation was written, Jesus is speaking in this book, 35 years prior to that, 35 years prior to that, the place had been completely destroyed by, by an avalanche, not an avalanche, by an earthquake. They'd had a major earthquake quake 35 years before. But they, they rebuilt. It was kind of like when they hit the Twin Towers, and we, they rebuilt bigger, and they went all out. They built incredible theaters. They built incredible stadiums. They had these massive public baths. And in the ancient world, the city of Laodicea was like Vegas, baby. It, they had shopping centers, and people came from all over the place. But Laodicea had one major problem, and that they did not have a good water source. And there was two sources of water that came into the city of Laodicea. One uh, came from a place called Heropolis. Now, that, obviously, that's where superheroes come from, because that's just what that... That's a joke. I, <laughs> but from... Heropolis, the water was hot, okay? So it was actually a prime way to, to power your, your heated baths and that kind of thing, and so the water was hot. There was another source of water, and that was Colossae. Now, Colossae, the water from Colossae was cold water, and so that was, it was refreshing, it was good. So they were both good in their own way. They had hot water coming from Metropolis. They had from Colossae, one hot and one Cold, And then when they got to Laodicea, it was not really hot, and it was not really cold. It was, it was dirty, it was tepid, it was, it was lukewarm. So when Jesus is speaking to the church in Laodicea, they knew exactly what he was talking about. When he said, I know the things that you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are lukewarm, neither hot nor nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now, if you're reading the King James, it would say, I would spew you out of my mouth. If you dig into the Greek, it means to puke. It said, I'm going to puke you up. It is going to make me so sick. If you, are, if you are apathetic and you're not hot, you're not cold, you're just right in the middle, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. So God is speaking to the church of Laodicea, and, and, and what he's basically saying, you guys, you are spiritually stale, you are desperately detached. It doesn't just break my heart, it turns my stomach, it makes me sick. I can't help but spit you out. They were indifferent. They were apathetic. Now, there's two sources, I think, of that cause indifference. The first is uh, self-sufficiency. We, we kind of got it all under control. And the scripture talks about this and, and right in the same place. He's still speaking to Laodicea. He says, you say, I'm rich. I got everything I want. I don't need anything. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. It's like, hey, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Everything's fine. And we live in America, and, and things are so good here. And, and the distractions of this world press into us. They press into us. Mark 4, 19. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things so no fruit is produced. And so it's really common. And I see, this is the thing that I see happen in people's lives more than any other all day long every day. They, sometimes they kind of like church. They like the idea of church. They like the idea of God. They want to have good family values in their families. They want to be healthy. They want, to, they want good things to happen. And then they, so they kind of come a little bit, and, 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 but they don't quite, they don't get it. They, they, don't, they don't get rocked by God. They don't get the good stuff. They just kind of hang out in this apathy. And it's because it's the lure of wealth. It's, it's the boats. It's the money that we have. It's the, the, the things that we do. And, and we, get, we fill our lives so full of stuff that there is no place left for God. And, and, so much, and, and it's your attention. And then we get apathetic. There's no passion. 
And now we got all these Christians running around that they, all they do is whine and complain to each other about this, that, or the other thing. And for the American church, I believe that this is us. This is who we are. This is the greatest threat that we have to our spiritual life is our comfort because it is so comfy and easy. It's so comfy that we do not need God. It's like we got just a little bit of Jesus, and that little bit of Jesus was just enough to make me feel a little better. It was just a little, enough to kind of make me feel better about my sin. I got to help a little bit over here. I got to feel better about myself, but never quite so much that we deal and we grieve for our sin, and we're broken for our sin. We got, it's like it, it's almost, <clears throat> I think there's some people who are running around, and it's like they're inoculated against conviction. It's like we give them just enough of Jesus. We give them just enough of church and good feeling and, and warm fuzzies that it's like, well, I'm a pretty good guy. That preacher up there told me so. I, I can, you know, I, and, and the, the sin over here isn't a big deal. And, and let me, I, I don't know. We, get, we have just enough of Jesus to kind of get a, a vaccination. And most Christians don't grieve for their sin. Now, on Wednesday night, I'm going to teach you how to do a mindful prayer, mindful worship. And the one that we're going to do is this last song that we did. We're going to breathe in. We're going to say, you're a good father. And then breathe out and say, that's who you are. We're going to breathe in. I am loved by you. And we're going to breathe out and say, that's who I am. Because I want that truth in your heart. I do those mindful prayers every day. I don't think a day goes by where I don't spend an extended period of time doing a mindful prayer. The one that I go back to over and over again, there's a few that I use, but the one, the most popular one is one that is uh, about 2,000 years old. People have been praying it since before the early church fathers, and it's Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And, it, and it's so important that we live Grieve, look, I don't ever want to hurt you with my sin. But most Christians have completely become inoculated against it because they don't think they need God. They, they like him. They kind of want him in life, life a little bit, but I, I don't need him. So living with indifference, living with lukewarm indifference, okay? We're more concerned. This is, if these things are true, you might be living in, in, in indifference, okay? We're more concerned with impressing people than living for God. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, and unholy. Jesus uh, even said, uh, woe to you. When everyone speaks well of you, uh, if, because then it's, it's, it's bad for you. Um, <clears throat> when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. See, you can't love the things of this world and Jesus at the same time. And, and we could preach a whole sermon on that. You just can't have both. But that's exactly what 90% of Christians are trying to do. They're trying to, to, to chase after all of this stuff in the world, and they've completely forgotten about God. We're obsessed with life on earth rather than eternity. When you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Now, we rationalize sin and live without truly fearing God. That means we're being apathetic. And, and we do this. We do this. We, we rename stuff to make us feel better about it. And so it's, it's not adultery. Uh, instead, it's just an affair, okay? It, it, it's, it's not porn. It, it, it's simply a, adult entertainment. And then we rationalize one step better, and we say, well, you know, at least I'm better than that guy, you know? I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, but I'm, I'm better than him, so I must be good enough. That's not how God looks at it. Or how about this? We believe in Jesus, but we rarely share our faith. If you really believed in Jesus, that he died, he rose from the dead, he's coming back again someday, every human person is going to see him face to face. If you really believe that, are there some things in your week that might have been different? I mean, if, you, if, if we as Christians actually believe that, so we, we don't really believe or else we would be, we'd be doing it different or else we would be sharing the gospel. Or if you have a tendency of only turning to God when you need something, okay, that could be you. He's just, he's just a tool to be used. Or you're just not much different than the world. We actually should look different. Church, we, we have become indifferent. We have become indifferent. Now, I, 
I, I am, I'm right there with you. And I, I think the Lord has a sense of humor. I, I really believe that. I think he has fun with me sometimes. I think he tricks me around. I think that the week that he uh, was going to have me speaking on indifference, he gave me a stoned uh, hairdresser. Um, I just think he thinks that's funny. But I had something else happen, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this with you. I, I wasn't sure that I should or would or whatever, but, um, you know, every, and everybody goes through this stuff and, and that kind of thing. And, and I was feeling a little dis, kind of discouraged. You know, like oh, things, some things are just not going like I wish they were going, and some, you know, and and things, and and uh, uh, and so then I, 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 I said to Inger Lisa, I think it was it was Sunday night. I said, yeah, if if you, and by the way, my wife, uh, she she just she's just a rock star these days. Everything she touches turns to gold. Uh, well, I, she probably wouldn't feel that way, but uh, in this last year, for the second time in six years, she became her boss's boss. Uh, and so it's, it's gone really, I mean, God could have only done that, uh, things, and, and just uh, the, uh, she, uh, uh, I'm going to brag on her just for a minute, I think she's pretty cool, uh, she, she is the uh, commissioner for the state of North Dakota, she oversees all banking, she, uh, she tells Google what to do in Amazon when they do uh, business here in North Dakota, uh, she has, uh, you know, she meets with the governor one-on-one, she's, she's going to be a roommate with the governor's chief of staff, pretty cool stuff, you know? She is doing incredibly well, and 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 it's, so I said to her, I said, you know, if you get an opportunity, let let's just let's move to Washington, you know, <laughs> let's let, we'll, we'll go to Bismarck because yeah, I I just can't seem to be able to get some things going. Now, if you know me, ap- apathy in Scott just doesn't really hold hands very often. I mean, I I'm you know I don't this you know let, let's just go. I just I'll just sit around. I homeschool Elizabeth, you know. And uh, and I'll be a stay at home dad in, in in some place and and that, and that would be good, and and, so, and I told her I said it to her jokingly you know I didn't really mean it I was just you know kind of feeling it you know but not you know you don't got to worry about me or nothing I mean things are things are fine we all go through moments of whatever I guess but I, but then I went to uh, I went to work out the next morning and I'm almost two months now when I've actually been working out three days a week it's I've never done this well since I was fifteen. Um, but I, I, I went, and, I, and as I'm going through my, my workout, I'm at the squat rack, because that's really cool. You're cool if you do the squat rack. Um, but I'm, and, and, I'm, and I'm thinking about this, and then I got a half hour into it, and I realized, you know what? For 30 minutes, I've been fantasizing about what it would be like for Inger Lisa to get an opportunity for me to go with her. And it's like, Lord, I, there is an apathy that is settled in my heart. And, and so then I, 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 I yeah, it's just so stupid. I got emotional there at the squat rack. I really did. I had, I had, I got tear. I didn't, I, I, I was manly. I didn't, no one knew that I was getting weepy, but I, but I readjusted things. And, and I said, oh God, this, and so then I, I thought, okay, Scott, you're really obviously not in a very good place here. Um, you need to, you know, you need to focus a little. And, and, and it was on a Monday and, and, and Mondays I give myself a little, a little room to be depressed because I, I, I'm emotional. I'm a little manic. Mondays are never a good day for Scott, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm up and down. But I went into the hot tub, right, the hot tub there. And I, and I, did, um, I did, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, for about 15 minutes sitting in the hot tub. Then I got too hot. I had to get out then at that point. Um, then I went to my computer, and I had this grandiose idea it was and that was uh, and that thing that we're doing Wednesday night was birthed out of a Monday morning thing but what I what I want to say to you is that that uh well number one I I think uh, has a sense of humor I think he knew I was gonna be preaching on apathy and I think he peeled back his protection from my heart to let me have a little bit of empathy for that because apathy has never quite been my thing you know what I mean (laughs) I I'm usually charging the head pretty hard I'm usually pretty passionate I really believe the Lord allowed me to feel something that that isn't typical of me so I could preach on it with a little more sincerity. I, I really think that. Um, but if you're here today and you have uh, some apathy happening, there's an answer. And the answer to your apathy is focus. Focus is your answer. Because we can't really control what we feel like, but we can control where our focus is. And look at this verse again. You say I'm rich and I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, miserable, and poor, blind, and naked. Jesus is saying this to wealthy people. 
They don't think they needed God. But I'm telling, I'm here to tell you today that if God isn't a, the focus of your life, you are wretched and miserable, poor and blind, and you don't even know it. If God isn't the most important thing in your life, he's, he doesn't want to be your top priority. He wants to be the hub. He wants to be the center that all of your priorities flow out of. That's what he wants for you. And if he's not, you don't even know how hurt you are today. But God has got good news. He says, I correct and I discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. See, my God loves you so much that he might even do some things in you to make you uncomfortable to bring you back to himself. God did that for me this last Monday. He allowed me to feel some emotions that are not typical for me. He allowed me to daydream in ways that are completely not typical of me. And, uh, and he jerked my chain. And he refocused some things in my life. Why? Because he loves me. Because I am loved by you. I'm loved by you. And that's, that's who I am. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Because look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together. That is my God. Faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. So whatever you are going through today, wherever you find yourself, the thing that I have to say to you is very simple. And that is that no matter how apathetic, whoops, no matter how apathetic you are feeling today, the good news is you don't have to stay there. You don't have to be there. And the answer is, is not a better preacher. Thank you, Jesus. The answer is, is not a new program or a new thing. The answer is simply your focus. And that's why it is so important. That, and, and the way I did that is I went in the hot tub, I closed my eyes, and for 10 minutes I breathed in and I said, Lord Jesus Christ. And then I breathed out, Son of God. Then I breathed in, have mercy on me. Then I breathed out, a sinner. Because when I am living in the knowledge and I am grieving my sin and receiving his, his love and his forgiveness, when I'm living in that moment, I can't be indifferent because I am so loved by him. I am so forgiven by him. The mercy that I get to experience in my Jesus is so perfectly complete. And so I take my focus and I put my focus on the important thing. God, I am a wretched sinner and I am loved by you. Those truths, that is where your focus belongs today. Because if you can take your focus and you can put it on that, God, I need your grace and I walk in your, your power. When, that, when you live in that moment, everything changes. Everything changes. You're going to share your faith and not even going to think about it. You're going to be centered and passionate and not even think about it. When you, push, when you get pushed down and things are hard and, and and things aren't as easy as you were told they, were, they would be. And we all are there sometimes. When you come to this, look out, I just, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The grace that, when I am living in his grace and his love, there's not much else that matters. All that he asks of me is obedience. That's all he wants. Because faith alone isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It's dead and it's useless. So if you're here today, I, 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 you don't have to tell me about it, but just shine a light for a minute on your last week and you tell me where your focus has been. And if your focus, God has not been the center. He hasn't been the, the center of where you're focusing. I'm here to tell you today, whether you feel it or not, you are wretched and miserable and not living the life that God wants you to live. And I didn't say that. We read that in his word this morning. That's what his word says. You, and, and you don't even feel it because you're too comfy. You don't even know it. And so my prayer is, is that God would do to you what he did to me. And he would knock you out of your comfort a little bit. That he would, he would make us uncomfortable. Will you close your eyes with me today? We love you, Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that every person in here, that we would find ourselves just open to you, God. Just take a minute, and as you're breathing in and out, just, just focus on the Lord and ask him, Lord, where was my focus this week? 
Just t- take a second. Where was my focus this week? Where was I looking? Was it kids sports? Was it my job? Was it my was it my family? Was it something good? I mean, anybody would think that was a good thing, but that's where all my focus was. Just and just be honest. It's just you and Jesus that knows what you're thinking right now. Where where was your focus? Where is your focus today? Now, if this if this stumbling preacher got through to you today. How can you bring that focus back on to God? How can you make him the hub of your life? Before we're done, we're going to pray and we're going to confess that to him. We're going to say, Jesus, I want you to own me. I want you to be the most important thing in my life. Help me, God. But without deeds, it's just dead and useless. So Apparently, we have to do something. We can't just say we want him to be the most important thing. There has to be things in our life that that tell that. How do we make him the most important thing? So ask him, would you? Jesus, okay, my focus has not been where it's supposed to be. Where do you want me focusing? Now, I love you. I got lots of, I could give you lots of ideas. But I'll tell you this one right now. Tune in on Wednesday night and let me teach you how to do that prayer. Something about it that just really helps you focus and gets you to that place. Lord, I thank you for everybody who has come to church today. Thank you for anybody who has come today that has never been at the rock before. And God, I I am so thankful for that, Lord. And I, I pray, God, that we would be a people Help us, Lord, to have fun and to be silly and let, you know, Led Zeppelin worship. I mean, that's, that's awesome. But God, I just pray that you would not let us just be apathetic. God, I pray we wouldn't have to live that way. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just pour yourself out, God, in us. And that, Lord, we would say, Lord, I belong to you. I want to be owned by you, God. I want you to spend my life like currency. I am not my own. You bought me. I am washed by you, God. So, Lord, I give you my life, all that I am, everything I ever will be. Lord, I take, I choose, and I make a commitment right now today to take my focus off of the success, off of whatever it might be. I'm going to take my focus off of that and put it on you. God, I do that today. I confess that in Jesus' name. If you're here today and you are changing your focus to being on him, or you're at least saying, God, I'm going to do all that I can to change my focus and put it on you. If that's you today, let me know on that card. Just put a T on the card. Just, just put a cross on the card. It says, Pastor, I'm changing my focus today. I'm responding to what you're saying. You can also text it to me, that text anything number. Put it on there and just say, Pastor, I'm, I'm there with you. I'm changing my focus. It was on something else. If you want to tell me so I can be praying for you what your focus has been on, that's fine. I will agree with you in prayer to help you with that. But, Pastor, I'm changing my focus today. Lord, I thank you for the, the I pray that everybody here would come have lunch with us, Lord. I pray if there's anybody here that maybe doesn't know anybody, Lord, you just give them a big shot of bravery today, God, because it can be kind of intimidating and weird to walk in someplace where you don't know anybody. But I just pray, Father, that you would uh, bless our time. I pray, God, you would bless the food. In Jesus' name, we love you, God. Amen. Jesus was a rock star.